Yes guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the career mode on FIFA 22 with Everton and we start today's episode with our game against Brighton. Obviously coming off the back of the, of the previous episode where we, in the league at least, we got one win and one draw. Um, then obviously we ended the episode with the 2-0 uh, win in the Carabao Cup against Stevenage. Um, the big change to the starting lineup for this Brighton game was... Fabian Delph coming into the central midfield role, replacing Andre Gomez. Obviously, you mentioned on the previous episode in that Stevenage game how well he did play. And I know it's a big step up from against League 2 opposition to against Premier League opposition in Brighton. But we felt Delph was in that kind of form and we felt he, he earned that start in the Premier League. So we have started him here in this game. And it was a difficult game, this Brighton game. Neither team was really creating too many opportunities. There were shots here and there from the edge of the box from from outside the box and occasionally one of the teams got in behind the other team's defense but it was a rare occasion both the goalkeepers were were on form and it was a really difficult game to sort of break down and, and get results in and in the end it did end up as a nil nil draw so again continuing in the league unbeaten there's two draws and one wing coming off the back of that so again we can't complain with that we're, we're happy and we haven't sort of lost a game yet and, and we're picking up as many points as we can. Um, coming out of that game though, uh, our, one of our youth players, Goody, uh, we mentioned in the previous episode about converting him to a centre-back because he was uh, six foot six, and we did manage to do that and that actually increased his rating up to a 51. Still not a brilliant rating for a youth player but a 51 rated six foot six centre-back nonetheless and hopefully he can still build on that and, and become a much better player. And then you saw as well we had another youth player come in from the youth reports that we received back um, and it was a left back called uh, Reed, uh, 61 rated and we just put him on a development plan to try and improve him. We don't actually have a uh, another left back at this point except for Luca Digne um, so if needed, if for whatever reason Luca Digne can't play with his injury suspension then we may look to fast track Reed into the first team on that left hand side in defence but until we need him, we're going to keep him in that youth squad and try and develop him as much as possible to hopefully get him up to a good enough rating to at least play back up to Luca Digne and who knows, potentially he could even overtake him, but we'll have to see see when that opportunity comes. But coming off the back of that, we do go into our second game of the season against Burnley. We actually changed it to three of the backs for this game um, and it was mainly due to, obviously, the aerial threat and the, and the strength and physicality of, of the Burnley side. We thought if we put three at the back, we can keep Chris Wood quiet and hopefully get a result that way, whether it's a draw playing defensively or whether we can nick a goal. But as you can see from these highlights, it went completely not to plan. Chris Wood got an early goal for them from a set piece. Maxwell Corne got a goal as well. Um, Chris Wood did get another goal as, as well just after that one to bring it to 3-0. And then, as you can see there, um, Rodriguez scored again from a set piece and that's where Burnley were really hurting us. They were getting balls up to to their attackers, as we said before, with their height and physicality, it was always going to be difficult, but they were really utilising them and, and really putting us under a lot of pressure and, and really punished us, really. Awobi did get a consolation goal there at the end, but ultimately a 4-1 loss against Burnley at home is not a good result, and I think we'll never be using that free of a back formation again, or at least for, for a long, long time, because clearly it didn't work. Um, you did see there as well, just before we go into this Aston Villa game away from home, um, we did agree a two-year loan for the striker Sims. Um, he's going to Cagliari for two years when the transfer window opens in January. Um, and just off back of that, I don't know if you saw in the last episode, I didn't actually mention it, um, but we have agreed sort of pre-transfer window sales for Tosin and also Gabamin. Um, they will both still play a part this uh, up until January, up until they are sold, um, but they both will be, will be going when the January transfer window comes. Um, so that's two players off a wage bill and, and a, a bit of funds coming in from them. So we we decided to sell them because we didn't think we were going to get too much gameplay out of them. We've got enough players in their positions and it was just a case of getting some funds in. And, and as I say, reducing that wage bill as well, um, sticking to the objectives that we had at the start of the season from aboard. Um, but going into this uh, Aston Villa game away from home, we did get an early lead through Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Um, but Villa did peg us back with Ollie Watkins' goal, and then you saw there Danny Ings scored an absolute cracking bicycle kick from a corner um, to bring it to 2-1, and he ran straight over to Steven Gerrard, venue manager, to thank him. Obviously, I don't know whether Gerrard showed him how to do that in training or, or what's happened, but he, he was really grateful to, to Steven Gerrard, the new Villa manager. And then Villa did extend their lead there through Leon Bailey, giving them a 3-1 lead, going into sort of the last uh, 20, 
last 15 minutes and as you can see there are heads dropped El Garci got in behind our defence and Villa actually made it 4-1 um, and we did actually end up losing this game 4-1 as well we did get a chance here right at the end to bring it to 4-2 but it wouldn't have been any more than a consolation goal regardless um, but unfortunately it didn't It didn't go and you'll see here Delph plays out the ball falls to uh, Luca Dino on that left. He brings the ball in. Calvert-Lewin, normally so good in the air, but Martinez makes a great save, and that, that was that for that game. Um, and two 4 1 losses in a row, the first two losses of the season. They both weren't good results, especially the Burnley one. No disrespect to them, but Burnley shouldn't be scoring four goals against us, and, and it did make our heads really drop, and, and we do need to address that going forward. Um, and, and there was a chance here to obviously bring our heads back up, bring some confidence in in the, in the cup game against Luton, at home as well. But you can see there, Luton got a really early goal through Adebayo, um, and that obviously gave them confidence. Our heads dropped. Again, we, we have changed the team up. We have got some first-team players in there, um, but we have changed the team up, obviously, against lower league opposition. But Luton capitalised. They got a goal early on, and then we were pushing for the rest of the game, and, and we were trying to get a goal. You can see here, Richarlison had a good chance. Their keeper scored, but Luton were really sort of that they were still attacking, but they were also making sure they were defending really well. They had that one nil, uh, one nil lead to hang on to, and were doing everything they could to make sure that they didn't let that slip and let us back into the game. And it was a really difficult game to to sort of get a hold on and and claw ourselves back into. And you can see here, with just just over ten minutes left to go, we get a chance here. Unfortunately, we the keeper does save it, and Decore. I don't know whether he was trying to chip it over the goalkeeper because he was anticipating a dive or what it was, but unfortunately he did hit the bar and then we couldn't follow up from that either. Um, and it was a really tough game in the end. I think conceding an early goal made it really difficult and we actually did end up losing against lower league opposition. So that's three losses in a row in all competitions out of a Carabao Cup in the early stages. And we really need to pick ourselves up and put in a, put in a good performance out here against Norwich at home. Um, this is going to be obviously the last last game of the episode, so fingers crossed we can end this on a high. And Fabian Delph there gets us off to a great start with a goal. I said in the previous episode, I said at the start of this episode, that Delph's playing a lot better than I expected him to. And somehow he manages to do a flips and tricks for his celebration. Never knew Fabian Delph could do that, but if he can do that, then fair play. Um, but yeah, he's he, he's performed really well for us, and, and you'll see throughout this game as well, he, he continues that form, and he's making it really hard to actually not play him, which, which is never a bad thing, so... Fingers crossed he can carry on this. He is one of the players you saw just a minute ago. Um, we were looking at the players' contracts, who whose contracts ended um, at the end of this season. And Delph was actually one of those players. So we'll have to have a think. Obviously, he's not the youngest player ever. But we'll have to have a think of whether we want to keep him in the team, whether he keeps up his form. Or if he starts dropping off, then potentially whether we release him and, and take his wages off a wage bill. But we'll make that decision closer to the time. Because at the minute, I'm really happy with him. Um, but we'll have to make sure that form continues. But you can see here, obviously, we've got the early goal from Delph. Calvert-Lewin scored a couple of goals. I and mean, then you can see there as well, Delph rises above Max Ahrens in defence and gets his second of the game as well. So both Delph and Calvert-Lewin both on for hat-tricks in this game. Um, and we'll see if, see if either of them can get them. But a really, really good performance, much better performance from us. We've really got our heads screwed on after that, um, after those losses. And Norwich did come back and did try to get a consolation goal you can see there they did hit the post but Fabian Delph looks to bring it out of defence against the player he beat in the air to get his second Max Ahrens but Max Ahrens does make the challenge on him and then Norwich do come back forward at this point five minutes left to go again it'll be nothing more than a consolation goal if they do get one which you can see there they do get one from Rupp um, but ultimately we do get the victory and that does bring us back into back into winning ways after those three losses in all competitions and you can see there Fabian Delph comes in and says thanks for thanks for playing him and we say to him that's that's you've played outstanding no doubt about it but just a little look at the youth report here just to see how everyone's getting in on the youth team um, but that will draw the episode to an end as always obviously make sure you do subscribe follow the journey and like the video and comment any transfer suggestions below thank you and take care